We bought this china cabinet from Facebook Marketplace for $100. It's in really great shape. I don't know that I love the top, but I'm going to try to change that. My husband removed the hardware for me and then he used crud cutter to clean all of the grime off. I wasn't sure what hardware I was going to use, so he filled in the inside holes on the drawer so I could put knobs on or other poles without having to worry about the size of the new hardware. And while he was filling in the holes, he also filled in all of the scratches with plastic wood filler. This is my first time really trying this stuff. I love that it goes on pink and then dries into the regular wood filler color, but I honestly don't really know if it works any better than regular wood filler. Then he took a break to watch the kids and I went to work removing the fretwork from the china cabinet's doors. The fretwork sits between the glass and the door panels, so you have to remove the glass to get to it. On this piece, the glass was held on with some pieces of wood, so I just pried the pieces of wood off with a scraper. They all came off easily, but I did leave the top piece of wood in to just kind of hold the glass in place while I rearranged my position and let the glass slide out gently hoping that I would not break the glass. The fretwork came out with a glass and I set them flat on some moving blankets so they wouldn't scratch or break. It's a little bit nerve wracking to make sure that the glass doesn't break in this process, but other than that, it's a really easy process. With that out of the way, I tried to remove the top. Looking at it from the top, it looked like it was just nailed on, but when I tried to pry it off, it was not budging. So there must be some glue or something else holding it together. So I guess that thing is staying on. Then I sanded the quick wood down and then sanded the whole cabinet to help the paint stick to it better. And then I cleaned up all of the dust with my vacuum and tack cloth. And then I taped off the hinges and I taped off the bottom cabinet with some more painter's tape and pre-taped plastic. I hate taping off cabinets like this, but I was pretty sure that I was going to not have enough paint, so I taped this off. All right, I'm going with a darker color for this china hutch and it says to not use a shellac based primer because it will make it dry too fast. And you know, shellac based is my favorite primers. So instead, I use this Aqualock primer in black. It's water-based and it's black, and it's an excellent bonding primer. It doesn't block bleed through stains, but I'm hoping we don't get any stains coming through since the color will be darker this time. It is risky business though, even with the darker colors. So I stirred it up really good, and then I poured it into the paint sprayer and threw a filter to make sure the dried paint or random debris wouldn't get in the paint sprayer. Even though the primer says to not thin it, I did with like 10% water, it's pretty thick primer and I just did not want it to have any texture on it when I sprayed it. It sprayed so beautifully. I love this paint so much. I sprayed it all over the cabinet with my Wagner sprayer, but I tried not to spray inside the top of the cabinet because I had other plans for that. and then I let the primer completely dry. When the primer was dry, I could clearly see where the quick wood was sanded down on the drawer because I had sanded down to bare wood in a couple spots. So I put some more wood filler on those areas. And then I grabbed some Vin Shellac based primer. This can is really old. So there's a lot of dried primer in it and it's just, it's bad. So I filtered it before I used it and look how many clumps were in it. That's crazy. Then I brushed and rolled two coats of the Bin Shellac base primer on the cabinet and let it dry overnight. The next day I sanded the wood filler and the rest of the hutch to make sure everything felt nice and smooth. Then I cleaned up the dust and touched up where I had gotten the white primer on the black primer. And then I taped the upper cabinet off so I wouldn't get any paint inside of it. 
While I was doing that, my husband put the paint in the paint sprayer. For this project, we picked out Wise Owl One Hour Enamel in the color Black Cherry. I have heard a lot about the One Hour Enamel and even though I used it once a long time ago when it first came out, I wanted to try it again. And what better way to paint a china hutch than going bold with a color I have never used before. Wise Owl says that this paint doesn't need to be thinned even when spraying, so we didn't thin it. And then I tested the spray on a piece of cardboard and felt good about it until I started to spray it onto the cabinet. And then I started to wonder what the heck I was thinking. First, the color was lighter than I thought it would be and it scared me so bad. And then I was nervous about how it was going to dry and if the paint was going to dry with a lot of texture in it. So I stopped for a minute and thought about it for a few minutes. And in that few minutes, it pretty much dried. So I was able to see that there was a good amount of texture left in the dried paint, which made me really nervous. And I thought, well, maybe I just didn't spray it thick enough. So it dried faster and then it wasn't able to level out like it should have. So I decided to just keep going. The paint itself is thicker than I'm used to. So I had the fluid setting all of the way open and the power was at like two or three, maybe it was at six. I can't remember for sure. It was a slow process though, but eventually we got the first coat on. A couple of hours later, I went back to check it out and it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't as good as I wanted it. There was still a lot of texture and there were a lot of tiny little air bubbles. So it felt pretty rough. And guess what? I could still see the wood grain on the drawer. So I filled that in again and proceeded to sand everything with 220 grit sandpaper to smooth out the texture. And while I did that, my husband thinned out the paint by 10%. And then I sprayed the next coat of paint on. It went so much better this time, but once it was dry, I could still see and fill air bubbles in the paint but there wasn't as much texture. So I sanded it again and I thinned it just a tiny little bit more so I wouldn't run out of paint and I sprayed a third coat on. And that was the ticket. It's not perfect, but thinning the paint made it look and feel so much better. I'm assuming that I might have some durability issues or a longer dry time. I don't know, we'll see. It dried for a day and then I removed the tape and taped off the bottom of the hutch so I could paint the inside of the cabinet without getting drips on the purple paint. And then I just brushed and rolled three coats of Sherwin-Williams Emerald Urethane Trim Enamel on it. I absolutely love the look of the white interior. It's a lot of extra work, but Man, it looks good. And the paint leveled out great and it feels so nice and smooth. I really like this paint. Then I removed the tape and put on new hardware. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button so you can see more of our videos. So here's what it looked like before. And here's what it looks like now. It's bold and purple. <laughs> I have never painted anything purple before, let alone a large china cabinet but I like it. It's definitely a statement piece. As for the paint, I'm not sure that I'm gonna use it again. I do have another quart of it, but we'll see. I just feel like I can get a better looking and feeling finish with other paint and less hassle. Oh, and one more thing. I didn't put the glass back in until after I took the photos of it, so I didn't have like a glare in the glass to deal with, but I learned a trick for putting glass back in I just put some clear silicone caulking around the edges to hold it in place instead of putting all of the wood pieces back in. So what do you think of the new look? Would you ever paint your furniture purple? Let me know in the comments.